specifically about the day two aspects, aspects and uh, how to navigate, read, and write them. And before we do that, um, a quick introduction about us. Um, my name is Priyanka Sagu. I work at SUSA as Kubernetes Integration Engineer. And I've been part of the Kubernetes project for a while in SIG release and SIG contrivix. Hello, I'm Jason. I'm an ex-consulting IT manager trying to pivot into the world of DevOps. Uh, I worked on the Kubernetes once. I assisted with the Kubernetes 1.25 release as part of SIG release. And I'm excited to be here. So um, with that aside, um, just want to give a quick um, intro on what this talk is about. Uh, we have a packed agenda for today. Um, so we have divided our talk into three parts. We'll be discussing uh, what prow jobs are, uh, what are the different types, and we'll be going into our anatomy of prow jobs. We'll also be looking at how, what are the various user interfaces we have to read and go through prow jobs um, and where the config actually sits. And we'll end with looking at a few examples of actually running uh, Kubernetes prow jobs, um, a few examples from there, and also we'll see how to replicate them locally. Um, yeah, and with that, um, let's get started. So what is prow? Um, prow is a Kubernetes CI CD system built by the Kubernetes project itself and built for the Kubernetes project. So most of the automation and um, grunt work that Kubernetes project does, that's done through Pra. Um, and for the sake of this talk, we won't be going into mo more on the side of Pra itself, how to deploy Pra. That's not the um, intention of this talk. It's more day two. We assume Pra is already working there and how to consume what's already working there. Um, and, but there are already a lot of great talks out there from the community uh, on Prow itself. So um, we, although we'll be looking at a bit of workflow, how Prow comes in the picture for Kubernetes um, contributors, those people like us who interact with the Kubernetes project from GitHub. So on the left uh, side, we have GitHub um, in terms of PR or any interface that we see our repos. And on the right hand side, we have the Prow infrastructure. Now, how to understand Prow infrastructure, we can read it as um, traditional Kubernetes architecture. We have master nodes and we have work worker nodes. Similarly, in Prow, we have something called service cluster, which is the control plane of Prow itself and all the workload that needs to be scheduled, uh, where our actual Prow job runs, all that happens on that side in the build clusters. So. What happens is we start from GitHub. Anybody, uh, for example, creates a PR or they comment on issues or any PRs, something like slash foo kind. Uh, it creates events from GitHub side and Prow is listening for that, those events. Prow has something called hook, which is listening for those web hooks and then it reacts to them. So it reacts to them by creating a Prow job CRD and that Prow job CRD in turn will create a pod for running the Prow job itself. And it will create that pod in one of those build clusters. By default, um, it creates it in of the build cluster, which is set as default for, in our case, it's build cluster A. But the Prow job could also say, oh, we want to be scheduled on a certain B or C cluster. So it will schedule it accordingly. And once the pod is scheduled on a build cluster, um, it will do its job, it will run its task, and when it finishes, it will send back all the logs, uh, everything that happened inside that pod container uh, in terms of task. It will collect all those logs, any useful artifacts or metadata, send back to Prow service cluster, and same will be updated back on GitHub interface. So um, that's how Prow comes in the picture for us, and we just looked at the word prow job here. Um, so what prow jobs are? If prow is a CI CD system, uh, prow jobs are the native Kubernetes native CI jobs, uh, again managed by the CI CD system. And we use prow jobs to automate testing, building, and deploying code changes in Kubernetes. So anytime there are code changes happening in Kubernetes repos, uh, we would be testing them through prow jobs. So 
any time you or me create a PR on any any of the Kubernetes repo, there'll be Prowl jobs coming to the picture, checking out our PR code, um, running few tests against it, and giving back uh, results. Um, we define our Prowl jobs using YAML, so very Kubernetes friendly, um, and all those Prowl jobs are triggered by GitHub events like the so PRs or commits or we can also schedule our prow jobs like traditional cron jobs. We can tell, okay, run it uh, every one hour or six hours or 10 hours, and it will do that for us. So um, with that, um, we have three types of prow jobs. Uh, we have pre-summits, post-summits, uh, and periodics. So, sorry, pre-summits um, are uh, the prow jobs that runs against any code that's coming from PR. So whenever somebody is creating a PR and you are adding new code changes to the GitHub repos, uh, uh, project, Kubernetes project repos, uh, there will be pre-submits coming into the picture. Those pre-submits will check, check out code from your PR and run tests against them. And if pre-submit pass, then only will go ahead and with merging the PR. So on Kubernetes project, there is no manual merge. Uh, all happens through Prow. After that, pre-summits, we have something called post-summits. That comes to the picture when code is already merged and something needs to be done. For example, we have just merged a Docker file code changes and now a new image needs to be created with this new Docker file changes. Um, we would be using something like post-summit uh, to create a new image and uh, image tag and push it somewhere. And then we have our um, very friendly periodics, which is uh, to run if you want if you want to trigger our jobs on a periodic basis. So uh, similar to our cron job, we can give it an interval or give it a cron friendly schedule. Yep, and so let's get into the anatomy of these three jobs that we just uh, the three kinds of jobs that we just saw. Let's start with periodics, uh, and every job starts with the job type identifier that identifies what kind of job it is. This one is a per periodic job. We have the name for the job. Uh, then there's this uh, label called decorate, which uh, let's let's take a slight diversion into something called pod utils. So this is a prow job, and that's a wrapper. That's pod utils around the prow job. So pod utils gives stuff to a job, like it, it enables source code, like if a job needs like the commit or the stuff from the PR that needs to be pulled, it's the it's pod utils that uh, enables it and gives it to the job. It uh, tracks metadata and logs of the job. And then if they have to be put up or uploaded somewhere, then uh, as part of artifacts, it pushes them there. So let's come back. Uh, since this is a periodic job, obviously we have an interval. This one runs every hour, or you could set it to whatever you want. Extra reps uh, contains the data needed to clone the repo, while the others would just take the, the repo on their own as part of what comes in. A periodic job, a periodic job needs uh, us to tell it which repo to clone. So here's the org and the repo or the base branch with the base ref. Uh, spec is a valid Kubernetes for spec to, uh, to generate the container. Let's move on to post summits. Like we said, this identifies uh, the job as a post submit job. Uh, here's our org uh, and repo uh, as to which one it would run on. Uh, the name, decorate, and spec are the same as periodics. Max concurrency, we can run up to 10 jobs or, or whatever we specify here. The max concurrency label uh, it helps us set the amount of jobs we want to run. Branches is a regular expression. We can set it to then choose what branch we want to run this job against. And if we want something else, like vice versa, we don't want it to run uh, on some branches, then skip branches is what we use. Like in this case, the regex tells it, like don't run on any release dash, whatever branches. Let's move on to pre-submits. Here's our job type identifier. Here's our org and repo that we need to check out in the container. Here's the job name, our decorate, and the spec. Always run true, uh, then we'll run this job, this pre-submit job against every uh, PR that is created for said repo. Run if changed, we'll run if only uh, the job uh, matches the path. Like uh, if, if it needs to operate on a specific path, like in this case, we're looking at if 
Cox, uh, if any file in the Cox folder is changed uh, as a part of a regular expression, and only then we would run it. Skip report, setting that to true would be uh, to change a status on GitHub or not. Context is a GitHub status context. It defaults to the job name, max concurrency branches, and skip, uh, skip branches we've just seen. Which brings us to something uh, called presets. Uh, if we have lots of jobs with uh, the common data that is shared across all of them, we can lump them all into a separate YAML file and call it a preset, like so. Here's the pre we're identifying it as a preset, we're giving it a name, and then giving it all, that, all the data that uh, the other jobs can call upon. So we're using an example here. There's a pre-submit job, for example, and there's a label uh, that says preset fuba, which is in the previous slide. It's over here uh, with the label. So this is called here, and then all the data from there flows into this uh, job container. There are also something called job environment variables, which is something prov provides job specific environment variables. They're injected into all, con all containers within a Kubernetes pod. We look at a few here, job name, job type, prov job ID, they are available across all containers. Some are not, like repo name. Uh, since our periodics, we have to give it a name, it's not automatically available. So for a more complete list, we could check. All the links are in, oops, all the links are in the footer. Uh, you can download the slides and uh, browse through or spell and through them later. And now that we know what prow jobs are, let's visualize all of them. So we do that by using a few tools. The first one is testkit, which lives at testkit.khs.io. Uh, this is what it looks like. There's a row of boxes and tiles. Uh, they're all called dashboard groups. Uh, opening them up leads to something called dashboard tabs. Uh, clicking a dashboard tab like it contrabex leads to something like this. The, the ones on the top, the tabs on top and the tabs down here are the same, but the ones on the bottom give you extra information like uh, what the health of it is, like what's, what tests within it are passing or are flaky or failing. So let's click this thing. And you see right now there's only a single job in there, something called pull verify. That's the CI job or what we call a prow job. Uh, we click it and it shows us a tile-like grid of the performance of this job across time. That's the name of the job and over there you can find the URL uh, that if you follow through will give you the config uh, if you're interested in looking at what this job is made of. Uh, in this case, it's a pre-submit job. That's a Golang container, it checks out K-community and runs make verify. So getting back, if we click on a tile in this grid, it will lead us to another view which, which basically it links us to another tool called Spyglass, which gives us details on jobs. So we find them at prow.kats.io. So let, let's explore this a little, a little bit. Uh, that's, I don't know. Uh, we're talking about all this in, in, in terms of uh, Prow tooling for the upstream Kubernetes thing. So if you install Prow, this should be available to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so I've got to run a bit. <laughs> I've got to run a bit. I'll take questions later. But you would want them together if you want to visualize them. Yeah. 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 Okay. I have a simple question about the preset that you spoke about. Ah, okay, okay. The Kubernetes cluster, you put Prow stuff in it, and you have the preset that stuff in it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Then I use your So, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, that's our ID for the job. The job run is an ID. Uh, that's the status. Uh, in this case, we passed, but it will also have run and failed or finished or whatever. Uh, coming down the page, we have the build log, which we could explode out. It will give you the details. And then there's uh, various uh, events and info about the job, like about, you could find out the volumes that were mounted, what the applied pod spec was. So now let's go look at the tabs on the top. This is job history, uh, the history of the job across all its runs. Looks a little like this, like this job had a lot of runs. Then there's Prow Job YAML, which is the, it's something like we saw before, but it's it discreetly provided here, the applied Prow Job in the YAML format. 
uh, looks like this. Uh, then we have, uh, this links to the PR that triggered the job in case of pre-submits, uh, like here. And then PR history would give us the history of the job across different uh, commits and revisions of the PR. Like there's a run and there's a commit, sorry, on top, and then there's a run below. Artifacts would give us access to the active. If the job created any, we would have them here. There's the build logs and the clone logs, et cetera, for this job. And finally, test grid would bring us back full circle to where we are. So Spyglass and test grid are uh, kind of the yin and yang in that sense. So let's, now that we've looked at how to visualize jobs, let's look at the source, like uh, where do they live and how do we find them? So they, they are all available in the test infra repo at git.kts.io over here. So let's look at the config folder. The prow, as an aside, the prow infrastructure folder, uh, sorry, the prow folder has the prow infrastructure uh, config uh, of the running uh, prow cluster. But uh, that aside, we are more interested in jobs, in the jobs folder and the test case folder. Let's dive into the jobs folder. Uh, we click in them and we see uh, the names of all the kind of repo organizations in there. Let's go into Kubernetes and we see the names of all the repos under the Kubernetes. Oh, get there. Uh, we went into community and like this file that's over here is the existing uh, prow job configs for the Kubernetes uh, for the Kubernetes community repo, and also the home for new prow jobs as they get added. So currently it looks a little like this. So let's go back up the, this and dive into the test grid folder. This uh, are all the folders with common test grid tabs and dashboards over here. Let's go into let's say the uh, Kubernetes folder. And again, the names of the repos under the Kubernetes org over here are listed here. Let's go into Kotrubex as an example. And all the uh, dashboard tabs are defined here. So what you see here, uh, the names, are, is what is visible here. So while we have, if, we, if we're looking at something discrete and defined, the, these things uh, help us look at them. Uh, as in we know what you're looking for, for example. But if we don't, then, the, then we have, we can use a tool called Hound that, uh, that's available, that lets us do code search. It'll also let us look for jobs. So it's available at cs.kts.io. If you just search for any regular expression, like for example, here we're just looking for a string called full community verify, we see it, uh, see all the examples where this thing has been used. Having said that, now we've looked at the anatomy and we've looked at presets. Let's take a little uh, dive into examples. So um, we just looked at the anatomy of various prowl jobs. Um, we know there are periodic pre-summits and post-summits. Um, now uh, we'll look at a few examples from the Kubernetes project itself. Um, we have three examples here. We'll be uh, looking at them one by one now. So let's look at our first example. We'll be taking a very simple job here um, from the Kubernetes release team. What this job does is um, it helps us to keep track of our enhancements tracking board. So all the Kubernetes enhancement proposals that we receive as part of a Kubernetes release cycle, we need to track them on a board and we use GitHub project beta board for that. So we have a job that does this for us. Um, what the job does is on left hand side, we have our Kubernetes slash enhancements repository where people who want to add new enhancements or features or anything to the Kubernetes project, they open issues and we call them cap issues. Um, so anything that have a lead opted in label um, during a release cycle, we collect all of those issues from K enhancements and we dump them on the right hand side, which is our tracking board. So that, that is the thing that we do. And we have created a bash script, a very simple bash script for that. Um, and we use a prow job to sync this for, our, uh, for us every six hours. So that prow job appears on test grid uh, on here under sync release release team periodics tab. And the name of the prow job is periodic sync enhancements GitHub project 127 module. 
Um, so this is the config of that prow job. Um, like we discussed, periodics tells us it's a periodic prow job name by the name. Um, that's the name of the prow job. And interval, it says it will be running at every six hours. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, in very beginning slides, we looked at if we can also tell uh, prow where to um, schedule our prow job. So this is how we tell it. We give it a cluster uh, field and we give it a name of the build cluster. So that's what we are doing here. Decorate to add support utils. So um, it tells, okay, you have to check in some code into the code container and grab all the logs and artifacts and make it available to us later, like we saw in Spyglass. Annotations. So this is how we are telling our prow job, you have to come on test grid side. So we are telling, okay, um, in line number seven, test grid create test group true. Uh, we are telling um, prow create a uh, show our job with the same name as our, our the name uh, defined in second line. Eight says uh, put put our job under sig release released in periodics uh, test, test grid tab and also add a one-liner description to that. And extra refs, it's telling us, okay, uh, whenever you are creating a port for this prow job, uh, inside the port container, check out this repo, check out Kubernetes SIG release at master branch. And then this is the spec, this is the uh, specification for the container. So what it says is create a port um, using that image, in this case, KTS infra colon latest, and inside that container, run this command, which is act exactly that bash script that we looked at, and also make this environment variables available. So how it looks like is we have a Kubernetes uh, pod running in our build cluster, uh, and inside that pod, a container is created using the container image that we provided, the spec area. Uh, KSA release uh, is checked out at master. All the environment variable that we are giving are also made available to the job and then we just run that script inside. And when when that script run, that means an, one instance of the job has run and you would be able to see that instance, uh, all the logs, everything that has happened inside the board here on Spyglass. So uh, that was our example one, pretty simple one. Um, with that, let's go to next one. And here we'll try to go um, something more useful. Uh, so we have something called Kubernetes version markers uh, in our space release release space. So what Kubernetes version markers are? Um, these are kind of text files which acts as um, public API for us. Uh, so Kubernetes keeps getting PRs and um, code changes every single day, and we have to test those code changes. So we keep building artifacts um, against all those code changes at intervals, and we store all those artifacts and GCS buckets. Um, so uh, something like version markers help us to tell, okay, what if we have to test any um, anything against those new code changes, how to grab those build artifacts from there. So um, this is like a screenshot from a bucket called KTS release dev where we are storing our Kubernetes version release markers. And we'd be having multiple files here, like we have one KTS stable one.txt. This file um, points to a Kubernetes version marker. So we get a version marker like that in this file. And corresponding to that version marker, we'll also have a folder inside the same bucket. Um, and that folder will be con containing all the Kubernetes binaries, all the, all the um, binaries that are built as part of a Kubernetes release. So, if we have to do any, uh, use these binaries to test maybe something, uh, we can grab them from here. This is a public bucket. Um, and how to read that Kubernetes version marker? So the first part uh, on the left-hand side, that that is a base release tag. So in this case, it's saying um, 126.3, that is the tag. Um, uh, and on the right-hand side, we have the latest commit hash on the, uh, release branch corresponding to the tag. So release hyphen 126. And the middle number 41 is saying, okay, there are 41 commits between when the tag was released and when this uh, version marker was created. So um, now we have a bit of, a little bit of understanding about Kubernetes version markers. This is a job that 
creates those version markers for us, um, uh, specifically the one we saw uh, for us every one hour. So we, uh, this is a periodic job. The name of the job is CI Kubernetes Build 126. Um, it's scheduled on um, KTS Infra Prow Build, runs at one hour interval, and decorate to says board utils is enabled. Um, extra ref part is saying you have to clone Kubernetes, Kubernetes on release 126 branch. Um, annotations we saw uh, that's a test grid tab name, dashboard, and every time if this job fails, um, somebody needs to be alerted, somebody needs to do something about it. So um, Prow will send an email to those mailing this. Those labels, um, we are setting presets here. So we are saying, okay, uh, whatever comes with preset, dine enabled puts here, preset service account puts here. Um, and then we have the spec area. So um, image name, and we are also setting resources, uh, limits and requests, giving it privileged accesses, uh, access. And finally, what we are doing is we are running a command here. So um, we have something called CREL. CREL stands for Kubernetes Release. It's a tool that Upstream Kubernetes Project uses to actually build Kubernetes uh, releases or every step that is required to build Kubernetes uh, releases. So we are using that here, uh, doing a fast release and whatever build artifacts are created, we dump them uh, in the bucket, KTS release dev. All the images that are created, we dump them on that registry gcr.io slash kts staging ci images. And um, we put them in a folder uh, and um, the folder, something like that version, and we put that value in a file called kts-stable1.txt. So how it looks is um, we have a code, a container is created using the image, Kubernetes is checked out as at 126 branch. Um, we have set pre-summit service account to true, so we'll have um, that service account gives us those two environment variables and give us um, that volume mount. Um, and we had another one set up, uh, preset dine enable that gives us one more environment variable and an empty volume. And then once our, our test environment is set up, all we do is we run the grail command. And once we do that, uh, this is how a run of that uh, particular job looks like. We are saying um, it's running that grill command here. It's performing, it's starting a docker because we had that preset dine enable. Um, it's also checking out into uh, that so GCS. It's, it, is, it is trying to log into the project uh, to actually have, get some credentials to put something uh, in the GCS bucket and eventually running that grill command to create artifacts. Um, job appears here um, un under the tab SIG release 126 blocking, and that's the name of the job build 126. So that's our uh, second examples, but version marker leads us to our final example for the talk, uh, which is very important. Um, so let's now deep dive into um, the Kubernetes end-to-end -end test. So, um, we will be looking in, with our third example, we'll be looking in to one of the tests that we run in the upstream Kubernetes space. This is a release blocking test. So if this fails, we have to do something about this test. Um, so this is a periodic job again. Uh, the name is CI Kubernetes GC conformance test. So this test, this job runs some GC conformance test. Um, we are scheduling it on that set cluster. Interval is three hours and we have set some presets here. Uh, annotations again, like we discussed, that's the tab name where the job will appear on test grid. Um, those are the dashboards under which it will appear and a one-liner. We see two new fields here, uh, two new, new annotations here, fork per release, fork per release replacements. So what it does is it tells Prow, uh, okay, whenever you are creating a fork for this job, every release, we have multiple releases that we are maintaining um, in Kubernetes projects. So create a fork for every release and keep re replacing those values, those flag values every time. And those flag values, we see them here. So this is spec area of, of our job. Um, in this particular job, we have a image called Kubekins E2E. That is the image that upstream Kubernetes project used to uh, run on their Kubernetes end-to-end -end test. Because um, this image ships with a few tools like test and another 
um, tools like G Cloud, etc., to interact with the cloud providers. So we'll have for AWS so as well. And kubectl, because we are talking about end-to-end -end tests, so we'll be spinning up a cluster, doing some tests, putting it down. So we need kubectl, and it will also, um, the image itself will it also give us KTS in our repo too. So um, these are the args um, that we give to the, that container image. Um, specifically the 21 line where we are giving a scenario Kubernetes E2E. So uh, we are telling, um, we have a few test scenarios to run and here we are telling, okay, pick the Kubernetes end-to-end -end scenario. And you can find all the test scenarios there um, in, and in the footer, uh, test infra slash scenarios. It's a folder inside test infra repo where we have different scripts uh, corresponding to different test scenarios. And here we are saying, okay, run the Kubernetes E2E script. And when you run that, uh, give all, everything below that double dash to that script. So that, that would be our configuration options for our test scenario. So how does this work? Um, we create a port container. Um, um, the container is created using Kubekin's image. Um, inside that we, we have test infra checked out. We have added presets, so all of this is made available to us. And then we run our test script. So we have given it Kubernetes end-to-end -end scenario. So um, uh, that's in, that, um, that script gets called out and all of these flags are passed to that script. And what that script does, it, it, it creates a kube test, it forms a kube test command for us. Uh, and kube test is a tool that is actually what's going to run our end-to-end -end test. The, we give, we tell kube test, okay, you have to spin up a cluster, you have to run tests on that cluster, and then you have to bring it down. And we can also tell it where to spin up the cluster. In this particular case, we are telling, okay, you use provider GC, so go and spin up a cluster uh, in a GCP cloud. Um, and we are also giving it information to interact with the, uh, the project, the GCP project, where it will be spinning up the cluster, and also other information. So we, we gave it a service account. It will use that service account to authenticate. Um, we did not give any flag, something called GCP project. So Prow has uh, another component called Boscos that on runtime keeps, uh, it's a lease management tool, resource lease man management tool. So it gives, gives you access to um, available cloud resources. So uh, this job will ask Boscos, okay, give, us, give me a Prow, uh, GCP project, I need it and uh, it will get one from there. Um, we also have two more flags here called extract and extract CI bucket. That's exactly what we discussed in our example too. Uh, so this is where we are telling uh, you have to spin up a cluster, but how will you spin up a new Kubernetes cluster? You grab all the Kubernetes binaries from that, but using that version markers. So you go to KTS release dev bucket, look for that version marker and grab all the binaries from there. So we hit that URL, we get back a version marker, we download all the binaries from there, we untar them. Uh, and then finally we are saying, okay, up down test. That is you bring up a cluster, you test. Uh, what test we are giving is the test arguments down there. We are asking it to run conformance test. And then once you have run the test, uh, dump all the logs that you are collecting in that artifact uh, folder and then um, bring it down. So that's what's happening here. We are starting a cluster. Um, we get a cluster. We set our cube config context to that cluster, and then we run, uh, trigger our test. The test runs inside the Kubernetes cluster that's running inside a GCP project. And then we keep collecting all our logs from there. And then we have the logs handy now. We will bring down the cluster. And all those logs will be made available to us on Spyglass. So we can uh, see them there. So the job appears here um, uh, under conformance GCE, conformance GCE master uh, on test grid. Um, a note here, we looked at this job, which is using kube test um, uh, binary, but there is a successor to kube test, which is called kube test two. Um, same, but a more simplified uh, modular version of kube test, and that's the recommended tool to use. We are in a process of migrating from using kube test to kube test two in the upstream space. So um, we looked at what prow jobs are, anatomy, and different examples, but 
we know proud jobs will always be running green. There will be time when uh, they'll be read all the time and we have to diagnose them. So um, the last section of our talk is testing proud jobs, which is quick. So um, we Prow is a very complicated infrastructure. Uh, there are a lot of plugins into it that enables us to run all sorts of different tests um, that are required by the upstream project. So we can't really replicate everything locally, but we can come closer um, to as much as we can, we can do with our resources available. So the easiest always is to, you grab the container image, you pull it down, uh, you exec insi inside the container image, and you run your command. Um, whatever you are giving it in the command section or argument section. That's one way. Um, the more, this, a little bit more automated version of this manual is we have a tool called Feno that's available again in test infra. You clone test infra, CD inside that, and you run go run, uh, prow, CMD, Feno. Uh, and you give a prow job URL to it. Um, you can grab that URL from Spyglass. Um, that will also do the same thing. It will, it will grab the image, container image URL from, from the spec file, uh, from the YAML file, and it will create a container exec in inside it, but it will keep pro proactively prompting you, this is what I need. You give me this environment variable, or you put this mount, uh, whatever is needed by the pro uh, job to run, it will tell you. Um, yeah. And then finally, the easiest, which most of us do actually, is to go ahead. Um, all of our prow job sits inside um, test infra repo. So if, if something is really required, you go and raise a PR against test infra repo itself, get it merged, give it some time to sock, see if it is running there. Good. If it's not running, you make changes in your PR and PR again. Well, uh, because we can't replicate it locally all the time, this is the method which most of us use, uh, but it's always to always good to test your changes locally as much as we can. And with that, we lead to the conclusion of our talk. So let me just summarize quickly. We learned what a prow job was. We learned about the types of prow jobs. We peeked into their internal anatomy to see what they were made of. Uh, we learned about reducing redundancy with presets. We added functionality with pod utils. We gave jobs a sense of the world with variables. We saw how to visualize jobs and drill into their details with test spread and spyglass. Then we looked at where jobs resided, the code in the test infra repo. We searched and we sniffed out other ones that we used looking for using Hound. And finally, we dove headfirst into various examples and saw how pro jobs lived in the real world. So looking forward, we hope the one thing we leave you with <laughs> is the confidence that you go read proud jobs and poke and prod them, you can analyze them, and then have them bent to your will. Uh, you can try it all at prow.kds.io. The source code is at git.kds.io. You can scan this thing to leave feedback and get the slides. Uh, we're on Slack, P. Sagu and Jason Braganza. Uh, our email is also here. Priyanka, you want to take us out? Um, so the one, um, a few, we looked at very few examples here. Um, there are a lot more out there and, um, we can see in test grid. And if anyone is interested to learn more about um, other prowl jobs that we have, or maybe like do a collective learning, uh, reach out to us at SIG testing or maybe give us a ping and we can run a together like mentorship cohort or something like that. We need help here to be reviewers of those jobs. We we get a lot of PRs uh, making changes there on the proud job side. So um, if you are just interested in learning, give us a shout there, um, we'd be happy to help. And in general, like if you if you are interested in asking any questions about um, test grades, spyglass, these proud jobs, SIG testing and SIG KTS infra um, on slack.kts.io is the right place for you. Um, with that, um, thank you again for joining our talk and we open the floor for questions. Thank you. Have 
So you are asking about guaranteed execution? Um, yeah, I mean, if I use some interval, it's sour. You don't have a guarantee that everything sour, that project is going to be executed because I don't have this guarantee in Kubernetes kernel. Well, it's Kubernetes again. <laughs> so uh, whatever guarantee we get from Kubernetes, we get from here. But yes, like we saw, there are some fields called maximum concurrency. It totally depends on whatever is the resource we have in our prow build clusters. Uh, we try to make sure we have enough because we need these to be running like concurrently. There is a reason why they are, some of them are said to be running at six hours and one hours because we need that signal to build some CI signal. Uh, so, well, yes, uh, I am not sure about the guarantee, like what guarantee, but uh, as far as I know, they run. Um, at least there will be a trigger. It might fail giving you something like, oh, I did not find a GCP project from Boscos. I needed a project and that was not available at that time. So it will try again. Um, but yeah, it will it will get triggered. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay, so if you have resources, we can do it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, if, if we are hogging on resources, that's like Kubernetes problem again, same. But yes, there will be a proud job trigger and you will be able to see that happening in Spyglass. It's very hard. <laughs> um, uh, Which is why we, we so we could familiarize. Uh, how hard is is it? Like we know it's very hard, and this is what we, we even we face the same issues. Which is why we kind of gathered what we knew and bundled it into this talk. So, so yeah, I'm thinking more about not maybe my, not so much about maintaining the project, but more about maintaining pro itself. I mean, if I need to upgrade pro, will I will I find Things change and the project perspective, and I need to update everything before updating Pro, Pro, and so on. Meaning, how, yep. how, how time intensive is So, yeah, yeah. So, the question is uh, how uh, how easy or hard it is to maintain Pro infrastructure itself. Um, well, um, we also have jobs that bumps uh, whenever there is a Pro change itself like there is there are there is something new added to prow tooling itself we create prow container images for them uh, because again like it's it's yaml files that are uh, applied to a kubernetes cluster to make the kubernetes cluster a prow service cluster so whenever there are changes we have some prow jobs called auto bombs uh, that comes into the picture and they they again auto bomb the cluster so uh, it's automated uh, and uh, it happens whenever there is a change coming. Hard it is, yes, p things fail and you have to come in and maybe fix it, but uh, we have tried it, tried to automate that. So um, hope that answers your question. Um, We, we have Prow, uh, we, we don't have other CI, CD running here. The number one reason is we wanted something which is very Kubernetes uh, friendly itself. Uh, so uh, I am not sure like about the concourse CI, CD here or Argo CI, CD here, how that would run here. But again, like we wanted, okay, whenever there are new changes, we have to just bump that container image version and we need to apply it again. That's the idea we want to follow so uh, this is what we do whenever there are changes we just pump that image version and we try to reapply it again um, again it's it's self uh, healing we'll keep reapplying it again until it's in a better position uh, maybe if it's all gone then somebody will have to come in and fix it but that also happens but that does not happen like uh, we also have pre-submit tests to actually check what is whatever new is coming in the prow config if it is working or not. So we have staging area and uh, something like that. Yeah.
um i honestly i'm not sure about that uh, but okay sorry the question is uh, how about using helm charts to deploy pro yeah Um, so you mean how to put up Pro um, on your own? Okay, um, we have documentations out there um, um, on test infra config slash Pro that the folder we just touched upon. If you click on that folder, you get all the YAML files that are applied into the cluster. So uh, there is there are handy documents as well, which um, gives you okay. You need to first apply this and th that and that. Uh, we for Right now, upstream Kubernetes Pro is very GCP tied, so we also have um, tools to automate that entire Pro deployment as well. That's not so much there for other cloud providers, but we, because running like we are running millions of jobs every single day, and that's turning to be a huge cost for the project. So we are also looking. Um, for help from other cloud providers and we have received help from other cloud providers so uh, we are also working on making uh, prow more cloud agnostic so there'll be more documents coming out where maybe like we don't have to manually apply each and every yaml file um, like we we do right now uh, for known gcp pro cloud providers but for GCP, yes, we have tools, something like that, uh, that will allow you to just bring up Prow in like five minutes or so. Yeah. It is changing, but since we all already have so many jobs running and whatever they are creating are important it's it's a very slow migration uh, we would see like the one the third example we saw and i made a note about using kube test 2 we exactly have a similar job for that that uses kube test 2 um, as well so what we are doing in upstream space is we are making clones of jobs right now and we are giving them soak time um, to to be like stable and when once they are stable and giving us enough good signal then we'll be slowly removing them but it's going to be a very slow move because uh, not all prow jobs are created by just the core kubernetes contributor people from other projects who are trying to test integration with the main project they come and add in jobs and sometimes you just somebody added a job and they are no longer part of the project so uh, you don't have the context how that job was added what it is doing and how to change it to make it move away from or maybe like make it more agnostic to not, not just docker and more container and time so things are happening um but what we just showed will stay for a very long time and more things will also come in yeah We, the second part, we we are doing a Docker in Docker. So there is a. Do Which is why we had a problem. Like if there's another external engine outside, how okay. do you use those versus just Docker? Uh, so it's going to change, it's going to take a while. Plus, um, I just want to make a note. Um, Cube test does that. Um, sorry, Kubekin's image that we saw that does that, Docker in Docker. And. Um, we wanted to include that because there are a lot of images, a lot of prow jobs that are doing that, and it's very hard to read those jobs to understand, okay, what you see there is a lot of bunch of flags, and you, you can't make out what they are doing. So for the sake of the talk, we wanted to include that. But if you go to the documentation, you will see a big banner there. The cube test is no longer recommended. We do not want Docker in Docker there. Um, so we are moving there. There is already uh, efforts out there to make, make it more agnostic. It's just that we need something already running there to drive the releases. Uh, but we are also working uh, on changing them. Yeah.
um there are kind jobs as well so you would uh, if you if you go sorry um uh, yeah if you go to test grade and search like um you would find all sorts of variations out there like people are testing all these all these uh, various options are already in discussion or maybe already tested and again like they are already out there maybe somebody started it and did not drive it to the end something like that um it's a it's a slow process people are trying options just that the old way is not it's going to take time to be like entirely so yeah we have talks here at the conference with moving things to it <laughs> so it's happening yep all right thank you folks thank you but um like all this questions uh if if you we, we are very much willing to take help in that uh, to move uh from like to make it more agnostic so sick testing sick kit and kts infra uh specifically kts infra if people need help to actually like maintain this prow infrastructure itself so any help would be helpful yeah. thank you thank you